Hello and welcome to the show. Now, have you ever fancied buying a property at auction but just don't know where to start? Mm, perhaps we can show you some tricks of the trade. Yes, join us now as we follow brave buyers buying their homes under the hammer. Traditional kitchen bathroom layout in this Plymouth Terrace is hardly desirable. So, <laughs> this is where you're going to have to focus your efforts. All these properties went to auction. We'll find out who bought them and what they paid when they went under the hammer. It's yours. Well, today I'm here to see a property in Stoke, but not Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire. That's around 240 miles away, because I'm actually in Stoke, Plymouth, Devon. However, there is a link with the potteries, because when I saw the auction catalogue for this one, my eyes definitely didn't glaze over. In fact, I got into a bit of a spin. Let's hope it's got me all fired up when I see inside. Take me into the fire, I'm just over two miles from Plymouth, the suburb of Stoke, is a residential area with lots of hills. Judging by the local terrain, you're going to need a lot of puff. And here it is, a two-bedroomed mid-terrace. Now, a similar property to this is currently on sale in this street for £119,000. This one went to the auction with a guide price of just £65,000. Ooh, tempting. OK, so there's some remedial work to be getting on with outside, but that shouldn't cost too much to put right. The roof looks in good order and the windows are double glazed. Will the inside be as tempting? So, what layout? is in store behind the door. Well, corridor down here, fairly standard. Front sitting room there. Nice to see you've got a nice open fire. Obviously, it needs a bit of sorting out. Stairs in a very sensible place there, up to your two bedrooms, and through to a rear living room area. Again, nice to see um, an open fire. It doesn't look very good at the moment, but, but open that up and that would be lovely. And then it is one of those kind of houses, you know the ones, you come all the way through to the back. This is where your kitchen is. It's the worst part of the house for sure. And even worse, I suppose, at the end there, that's your bathroom and loo. Isn't it even big enough for a bath, you've only got a shower. So <laughs> this is where you're gonna have to focus your efforts. All I want from you is some effort. To get the most out of this property that went to auction guarded at 65,000, I reckon a layout change is worth considering. What about moving the kitchen into the second reception room to create a small kitchen diner? You could then increase the size of the shower room to incorporate a bath. And what's left of the former kitchen could be made into a utility room. Upstairs there are two bedrooms, they're not huge, but have their own fireplaces and quite a bit of character. And hidden away, there may be period features. Outside, there's a paved area. Not the most inspiring of gardens, but if you wanted to let the house, the important thing is that it is low maintenance. But back inside, I've made an unwelcome discovery. Now, sometimes when you look around houses, things stare out at you and are very obvious. Other times, you've got to be a bit of a super sleuth. For instance, here in the front room, quick glance, everything's fine. And yet, well, what's that in the corner? Hmm, don't know. Well, just get down on your hands and knees and have a closer look. Pull back carpets and look at that. We've got something really horrible going on here. Um, my guess is, um, outside, uh, there's probably a problem with the drains or something like that. And the result is that it's actually <laughs> coming to here. Um, as you can see, that is quite nasty. Lots and lots of crumbling wood. Ugh. Yuck. And who knows what's happened to the floorboards, the joists, etc. That needs to be investigated. And as I said, you could easily have missed that if you weren't on your guard. Finding dry rot is never a good sign, but it is fixable at a cost. 
find out more about the potential for this place, we invited a local estate agent to come and have a look around. What does he think of it? I think it's a nice property actually. Um, I believe that uh, two bedrooms, it's exactly the sort of property people want in this area. It's of a good size and it's still got a lot of character. The layout's far from ideal, but if you move the kitchen, as I suggested, that would help. But what about the bathroom having to remain on the ground floor? The downstairs shower room here is very common for the area. A lot of people do sometimes move them upstairs. However, I do think that it's not a problem whether you're going to sell or rent the property. Downstairs shower room should be fine. That's encouraging news. But how much could someone achieve with this as a rental? If you're going to rent this property, I believe you'd look to achieve between £550 per calendar month and £600 per calendar month. So what could it sell for after a full refurbishment? When renovated, I feel this property would achieve between £105,000 and £115,000. Well, don't let the modest exterior of this place fool you. It does actually pack a financial punch. Whether you would want to do it up and sell it on or possibly keep it and rent it out, it works both ways. Let's see who fancied it when it went under the hammer. Lot 239, ladies and gentlemen. This is a mid-terrace two-bed house uh, in need of complete modernisation. Guided here at £65,000. So would somebody like to start at £65,000? £65,000 on the phone then. 70 or two. Yeah, 67, 67, 67, 70 now, 70 here, 72, 72, 75, 75, okay, thank you, sir, 75, sorry, 76, 76, 77 now, 77 there, 78, 80, 80,000 there, 82, no, 80,000, okay, I think you're out, anyone else want to come in here, a half, 500 pounds? 80,500. Can we say 82? No, I'll take the gentleman here was in, I'm sorry, 81. It's 81,000 pounds on the curtain then. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, hello? 81 and a half I'll take. 82. 82 with the tube. 83. 83. 84. 84 here. 85. No. No. 84 here. Thank you very much. 85 now. 85. 86. 86. 87? No? Okay, it's with you. £86,000. That's the first, second, third, last time. It's yours. £86,000. It was Nick who made that final successful bid of £86,000. He's originally from Plymouth and moved back from London a couple of years ago to retire along with his family. Over the last 20 years, he's built up a portfolio of buy-to-let. I met up with him at the property to find out his plans for this house. Nick, congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Um, tell me where you wanted to buy this place. Uh, this is a property to do up um, and hopefully move on. Um, I normally do rentals. This is a departure for me. So I've deliberately picked a fairly smallish project just really to kick myself off into this world. Right, so what's uh, prompted the move from renting out to, to doing up to sell on? Um, I've got quite an extensive portfolio of rental properties and I decided that really sort of, uh, with the family moved down here, that it was time to just diversify a little bit and uh, try this as another venture to keep myself busy in retirement. So why this little house? I just viewed that it was something that didn't need a huge amount of work doing to it to make it look nice and a good presentable property. Nick has a team of builders who he knows standing by and has already had them round for a quote. But his proposed refurbishment costs have had to increase from eight to ten thousand up to ten to twelve thousand pounds, as the cost of moving the bathroom and the local labour rates were more than he'd anticipated. So just what exactly has he got planned here? This room here, I see this becoming a kitchen. I'm not moving the bathroom from out the back, mm -hmm. but I do plan to extend that and to put a bath with a shower in because I view that if a young family's coming in here, possibly with the prospect of a baby. So um, building an extension then? No, no, I'm just going to come further into this area. Out the oh, back the here. existing kitchen? Yeah, and then plumb 
free small utility there. Okay. Front room will be a general decoration. Mm -hmm. Probably put some nice oak flooring down. I like solid wood floors mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. And then upstairs, I did look at whether to put an ensuite upstairs. Both myself and my plumber decided that uh, really it would take too much away. And we thought that people would prefer probably two good sized double bedrooms. Now what about the dry rot? Yes, I'm aware of that. I've got somebody coming in this afternoon. Oh wow. To look at that. I'm hoping it's not too extensive. So that's one of the things that I haven't factored into the budget. That's something that catches many people out. It's why a survey is so important, because it helps you calculate a realistic budget and time scale. Normally, Nick would strip the house out himself, but as he and the family are heading off to Bangkok for a month's holiday, he's got a team coming in to do the work. He reckons the place should be ready to sell about six weeks after they return from their holiday. So who's moved down here with you? Has the whole family uh, come? My wife and two children. Right. And how old are the lads? Ten and seven. Oh, they're going to get involved in the renovations. Uh, my ten-year-old already has. <laughs> has he? Yeah. He's got an eye for a deal. <laughs> you know? An eye for a deal? Oh, yeah. Everything's a deal with my son. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pocket money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He learnt, though, the first day he asked me how much for a day's labour. And I said, well, how much do you want? And he said, a pound. And I said, done. <laughs> and he came back at me and said, uh, I came in too low, didn't I? <laughs> and I went, yeah, you did really. He said, well, will you pay me more? And I said, no. <laughs> a deal's a deal. <laughs> well, a good lesson to learn for Nick's son, Henry. Watch the money and don't undersell yourself. Whatever age, you start property developing. Nick's moved down to Plymouth to retire, but it sounds like he's not ready to hang his hat up quite yet. I'm hoping that if I can do two or three a year, maybe, It'll keep me busy without putting me under too much pressure. I don't want to be under pressure. I just want to enjoy my retirement and have something to keep me occupied. Well, listen, good luck with it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Have a nice holiday. We'll look forward to seeing you when you get yes. back. Yes, look forward to it. <laughs> See you then. Well, Nick slightly worried that he might have underestimated his budget. Maybe he anticipated that one pound a day labour charge. <laughs> Well, maybe not. No, he seems to know what he's doing and he's got a good property here. How will he get on with his first property that he's buying to do up and sell on? You can find out later in the show. Now, Martin, it's been many months since we've last seen the properties. Yes, have those renovations been plain sailing or bumpy rides? Mm, let's find out. Earlier in the programme, we were in Plymouth and met Nick, who'd recently retired there from London with his family. Over 20 years, he'd built up a portfolio of buy-to-let properties, mainly in the Plymouth area. Although he was retiring from full-time property developing, he intended to still keep busy buying and selling properties. This two-bed terrace that he paid £86,000 for was his first project he'd done to sell. He was organising the builders and his 10-year-old son, Henry, was keen to get involved. The first day he asked me how much for a day's labour and I said, well, how much do you want? And he said, a pound. And I said, done. <laughs> and he came back at me and said, uh, I came in too low, didn't I? <laughs> and I went, yeah, you did really. He said, well, will you pay me more? And I said, no. <laughs> a deal's a deal. Nick planned to keep the bathroom downstairs and convert the second reception room into a kitchen diner. Three months have passed and we've returned. The house now has a new colour scheme and new guttering. It's a promising start. Nick and his son Henry are here to show us the rest of the refurbishment. The conversion of the former dining room at the rear into the kitchen has worked a treat, as Nick explains. Well, this used to be the dining room. Um, what we did was we blocked up part of the window it's had a complete new kitchen with some good quality units. What we also did was over here, there was originally two doors um, with a cupboard and an understairs cupboard. We blocked one of those doorways and allowed a nice big storage cupboard in there, allowing space there for a fridge freezer, keeping essentially this end of the room as the kitchen and this end as the diner. The former kitchen is slightly smaller and is now a utility room with access out onto the refurbished patio garden. There's new decking. 
and the original paving slabs have cleaned up brilliantly. Back inside, the former shower and toilet at the back of the house have been expanded into what was the kitchen. The resulting bathroom that Nick's created looks excellent and much better use of the layout in this part of the house. If you recall, there was a kitchen outside there. We've extended the wall outwards here, allowing us to put in a full-size bath with a shower and a new bathroom suite. There was originally three windows in here, but we've enlarged one of the windows to give the one window and take out the windows at the back. And that's allowed us both to have a nice size bathroom for a family, and also it's then allowed us to put in a nice utility room allowing for the washing machine and the tumble dryer. The front reception room is just as impressive. Nick employed damp specialists to treat the rot. The new flooring and pastel colour worked really well. Upstairs, the pastel shades continue in the two bedrooms. And I'm delighted Nick has kept the two fireplaces. The house has a charm about it. I really like it. This is his first investment property to sell on, but he's used the same trusty team of builders who he's worked with on his buy-to-let portfolio. And Nick's been busy too, with his son Henry lending a hand as well. What I like doing is um, cleaning, cleaning the rooms, but what I don't like doing is like um, putting the rubbish in his van or his trailer because it's very like dirty and don't really want to get your hands dirty. <laughs> but Henry is learning fast about how to clean up financially because he's raised his pound a day rate. This time it's going to be um, eight pounds because it depends really what I actually do. <laughs> Good lad. And talking of money, Nick had paid eighty-six thousand pounds for the house and set a budget of ten to twelve thousand. Has he kept to that? Came on over budget. Um, there was factors that I hadn't put into it, i.e. the dry rot. I'd not encompassed that before. And there was quite a lot of plastering extra to be done. It's not fully there, but it's about 13 and a half, 14, I think. A £14,000 spend would take his total investment on the house to 100000 Time to find out what two local estate agents think of the house and the finish Nick's achieved. The property looks great, it's really well done, it's really contemporary, perfect for the first time buyer. I love the fact that he's kept the period features, the picture rails, the fireplaces, uh, mixed with contemporary features such as the modern kitchen. I think the idea of bringing the kitchen into the dining room and making it a big space has really worked wonders. Nick plans to sell this house, but as he has other buy-to-lets, I'm sure he'd like to know the rental return. The rental I think we could achieve here would be £600 per calendar month. I think this property would rent for £600 per calendar month. So a potential yield of over 7%. Is that in line with Nick's expectations? Yeah, if I chose to go down that road, I think that would be a fair rent, yeah. Now for the all-important resale figure. Will the house be valued higher than the £100,000 that Nick has invested here? I think this property could sell for one hundred and fifteen to one hundred and twenty thousand pounds. I think this property, in its present condition, would sell somewhere between one hundred and fifteen to one hundred and twenty thousand pounds. So they agree on a gross profit of fifteen to twenty thousand before the usual taxes and expenses. I think the upper end is what I would hope to be achieving. Uh, I'm aware that properties around here are going round about that figure, and some are dearer. So I would hope to maybe push that in a little bit. Nick's already on the lookout for his next property to refurbish and sell. Will his son Henry be involved again? Yes, I think I'll probably have a few more with Henry. I may have to up his wages. Uh, he's now negotiating the rates of pasties as well as his, his money. So yeah, he'll probably have to have a couple of wage rises. Well, that's it for now. We'll be back next time with more thrills and spills from the auction rooms. On Homes Under the Hammer. See you then. Goodbye. Goodbye.